So do you know how long it's been since there's been a V8 in a Wrangler? 40 years, but now with the 392, we've got 470 horsepower and 470 pound-foot of torque in a Wrangler. And in this video, me and Nathan are gonna take it for a ride. You guys have seen Porsches and a lot of other vehicles that are out there, they have an exhaust button. I like to call it the magic button. And it's right here next to traction control, which I think is kind of cool too. You're not hearing much. What you're hearing is actually the fan. I mean, it sounds okay, right? Now I'm going to push the button. I push the button. Oh yeah. That's the good stuff. So you're out here on the trail and you have no cell service and you want to know where to go. What will you do? Well, Ted from Onyx is going to help us through that. Ted, tell us what you do. Yeah, um, well, we've made thousands and thousands of trail maps onto an app. And so before you head out, you can plan your trip using Onyx Off-Road and uh, save your offline maps because uh, once you save that, um, to your tablet or your phone. Um, you have all that information at the tip of your fingertips. It really enables you to go out, have a good time, have a safe time, and come back. And some of the cool things, you know, let's talk about some of the really cool things. So what they did was uh, they changed the kind of the front plate on the engine. So for instance, they moved the alternator much higher, uh -huh. uh, which is good for water fording. So your sensitive electronics are protected. But the part that I like the best, and they did a lot, right? They, yeah. they changed the brakes. Uh, uh, they, they beefed up the frame. frame and stuff. Exactly. But I love the fact that it's got true headers, right? That, <laughs> yeah. It comes from both sides of the engine, the exhaust, and then heads out kind of these cool quad exhaust tips. Now, we were kind of discussing whether, you know, they should have done like the Mercedes thing, right? Where you go out behind or in front of the rear wheel. Yeah, the baloney cuts on the side, which yeah. look really cool um, and sound really good. But overall, you know, I, I like the uh, quad exhaust out the back. And I love this little like button that looks like a raccoon over here that actually allows you to then change the exhaust note uh, from quiet to, I wouldn't say obnoxious, I would say it's loud. Awesome. I'm, I, oh. We haven't turned it off. <laughs> the minute we could turn it on, we just turned it on and we left it on. It just, it's really rewarding. They got the exhaust note right. They did. They yeah. really did from the inside and from the outside. All right, so functional air scoop, and the way they do it, you could get a bow wave, water, boom, hits the top, and then water goes out these two points. Gravity pulls it down, air stays high and comes through here and enters the engine through here, and this helps mitigate vapor lock. Let's face it, when we're doing this kind of rock crawling, you really don't need a big old V8, right? I mean, you could do this in a Fenestar. You, could do, you could do this with the two liter, you exactly. and you'd be just as you know, just as good. But there are a couple things that are important. That's one of them. The exhaust note, yeah. But also being able to fly up the cell at any speed, at any speed, any speed. And do a burnout. Yeah, <laughs> and do a burnout. And but but on top of that. Look, how many thousands of guys have taken a crate engine, a V8, and shoved it into a Wrangler? Better question is how many thousands of guys have taken like a 350 <laughs> Chevy? Well, you have to be Chevys, but also a lot of <laughs> Hemi guys have done yeah. it too, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. And this, I know a lot of you guys are like, this is really expensive. I totally agree with you. It's crazy Starts expensive. Starts at about 73. 73, 74. Um, the bottom line is, how much is it going to cost for you to buy a Jeep, yank the engine out, and replace it with a crate engine and get it right? This gets it right because it's warranty. It's just like a regular Jeep engine. I, I, that part is awesome. So I was sitting there and they were doing a presentation. They had a cutaway right where they yeah. showed the frame with the engine. Uh, and I thought, well, they just basically took a big old V8. But no, it, there's a lot more to it, right?
You know, cameras have really changed the way that people go off-roading now, and the new 392 not only is a rear-facing camera, that's Nathan, of course, but a front-facing camera that you can squirt off should it get dirty. Straighten it out a little bit. Perfect. Little, little um, Little um, Little um. Ah, back it up. Right there. Right there, good. Little, with authority. With authority, yeah. As Jim says, 392 it. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Nathan, so apparently this new Wrangler has off-road plus. It does, and uh, <laughs> what it does is it changes a few things, including the uh, algorithm for power. So it is mushier, according to the experts, which is good because it's been a little high strung up until now. Well, it also allows you to basically set a speed and then allows you not to have to work the throttle or the brake and just let the Jeep do all the hard lifting. Mm -hmm. And I'm using the paddle shifters to do it. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Going up and over obstacles, going downhill, I can really feel it pulling the vehicle. So there's definitely a weight difference between this and the V6. Is it more like the diesel, would you say? Yeah, it's a lot closer to the diesel and even perhaps a little bit heavier. So the cool thing or interesting thing about the 392, of course, is that uh, it's actually an inch taller from the factory than even a standard Rubicon. to stand above the regular Rubicon. Well, bronze is the call. You've got bronze recovery hooks. You've got bronze outlines along the Rubicon. And behind the wheel, you got paddle shifters. And that. All right, Nathan, so what's our fuel economy? Uh, 10 miles per gallon. Yeah, but you were driving like a maniac. Yeah, I was. <laughs> you gonna have a drag race? That's how you get 10 miles to the gallon. Officially, uh, I believe it's uh, either 13 or 14 combined, Nathan. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. We did all right then. Yeah. Those, uh, those were the trail recon guys, by the way. Were they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to add the new uh, 4xE. Yeah, the 4xE, I mean, it's a completely different powertrain. So, um, you know, given your dithers, which of those would you put in your Wrangler? You're not gonna like my answer. As much as I absolutely love this engine, yeah. um, I, I would go with the V6, the regular Pentastar. The proven Pentastar. The proven, I mean, they really are fairly reliable and I like the manual transmissions with the V6. It's the only one that you can get a manual transmission. Right. So, and I, as much as I would love this powertrain, it doesn't make any sense for me because you're getting really horrible gas mileage. <laughs> and uh, on top of that, it's just, it's really heavy, but also extraordinarily expensive. So in terms of seriously considering buying a vehicle, I take into account what I want to do over the long term. And I want something that has relatively good economy, still has decent torque, and has good reliability. And I don't care what any of you guys say. I've been reading and researching this for years, and the Pentastar is a very reliable powertrain. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's, not, it's not the most modern. Right, but you know, it's good. It's good. All right, and I gotta tell you, for me, it would be between this or uh, the, the new, you know, hybrid. I know it's, I know they're like opposite ends or bookends of, 
of the regular lineup, but there's just something so cool about actually it, having it, it an is electric really cool. Jeep. Yeah. yeah, and I like the fact that you can go what 20 miles 21, all electric, 21 miles all. Electric. Yeah, which is pretty cool in town. You know, I can just see you know taking my kids back and forth to school, being able to plug in and going all electric, and actually get really good mileage. But this, <laughs> okay, that re that's really good though. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, that is very. So, so good. <laughs> Sorry, sorry guys, I can't help it. It's very addictive. Now, I, it's, I, I think we can't have a conversation about the Wrangler without talking about the Bronco. And unfortunately, you know, we don't know much about the Bronco because one just passed us and that's the closest we've actually gotten to one. Yeah, I know, it was, it was about four feet away and yeah. it drove past us. Um, the thing is, is that, first of all, it was interesting because it's big. It's big. It, it's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. And this is, once again, the first time we've seen it in person. And also, um, you know, their, their powertrains, they, they have two right now, right? Yeah. So they have the uh, V6 and they have the four-cell, and they're both a turbo. And I'm very curious about those. Granted, they're not, you know, <laughs> they don't sound as good as this. But I am curious to, on the trail, are they good? You and, know, it might be like uh, TRX versus Raptor, right? It might be one of those. Uh, and actually, by Jeep putting... 392 under the hood of this they might force bronco to actually put like a coyote under the hood of the new bronco or bronco r special Edition, you know yeah. whatever yeah that's entirely possible and that would be really cool and that's the thing is that competition forces everybody to improve so by doing this putting this big ass engine in here it will force ford to respond in some way and ford will and jeep will respond and it'll go back and forth and eventually toyota's gonna have to respond you know where right? that leads to <laughs> a hellcat wrangler <laughs> <laughs> One can only hope, but things are changing uh, quite a bit. But but that four by E, that maybe they'll just you know up the amperage. I don't know. You know, they make it a little bit better. The thing is, is that every single time someone pulls a stunt like this, where they juice the hell out of it, or they beef up the suspension, or they change something, they have to respond. Your competition has to respond, and that's good for us. So Nathan, do you need the 392? No, you don't need it, but you want it. That's exactly right. It is a top dog Wrangler now, and there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be super happy to get their hands on a Wrangler with a big old V8. Yeah, now the question is, are they going to do this to the Gladiator, and are they going to put a Hellcat in one of these? Stay tuned. We are living in interesting times. As always, this is Roman. And Nathan. Saying thanks for watching, and check out tflcar.com for more news, views, and of course, Jeep Wrangler 392 reviews. You're gonna go more and quicker and faster and more vroom vroom, aren't you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs>